racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Bater. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Bater now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Welcome to a brand new episode of Tariq Radio. I am your gracious host. My name is Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have all of you lovely people tuning in right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing the late night broadcast as we do sometimes. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Loan Approvals. If you need 150 k right now for any worthy business project, they can help you. Loan Approvals 24 to 48 hours funding within five days or less their on-site team of experts will help handle all the details give them a call at 702-747-5648 if you need a loan of 150k 702-747-5648 ladies and gentlemen so while you guys are letting everybody know that we're live right now Retweet this, repost this, let everybody know that we're broadcasting live. We're going to take another quick commercial break while everybody's getting on in the room so we can have that discussion that we need to have tonight. We can chop it up. Um, by the way, go to um, officialfba.com because we still have the March Madness sale going on. And while you're doing that, like I said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't you move a muscle. We'll be right back right here on Tariq Radio. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed. Available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack. And the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game. Jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game. Jive chumps. Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com. Are you tired of nerdy platforms that refuses to acknowledge white supremacy and geek culture? Do you seek a black nerd podcast that covers topics like anime, video games, movies, and TV shows, and other topics that black nerds can relate to? Then you need to check out the podcast, The Swarthy Nerd at SwarthyNerd.com. Join the host, the TV guru, and Yuki the Snowman every Tuesday on their mission to provide empowerment to black nerds everywhere. So that is SwarthyNerd.com. Swarthy is spelled S-W-A-R-T-H-Y, SwarthyNerd.com. 
What's up, family? As you all know, it is tax time right now, and I know you need to get those tax refund checks back to bring your business up to speed. So bring your business to Comos Reliable Refund. Get expert help from a CPA for your business and your individual taxes. You can follow them on Instagram at K-O-M-O-S underscore reliable underscore refund or reach out to them at Comos Reliable fun.com that's k o m o s r e l i a b l e r e f u n d.com did you know that research has proven that deep focus creative writing can improve working memory lower mental stress and increase your creativity and bring about a general sense of well balanced being Check out deepwriting.live. That's a one-day interactive online seminar that teaches teens and adults through deep, expressive writing how to move away from everyday confusion and frustrations that life throws your way so that you can be focused, vibrant, and on point. Go to deepwriting.live to enroll right now and learn more. Spots are very limited, so go right now, deepwriting.live. It's tax time again, so let the experts at Clark Pro Taxes make filing your taxes easy for you. They can prepare your taxes in person or virtually in all 50 states. Just snap a picture of your documents and leave the rest to them. Let Clark Pro Taxes prepare your personal or your business taxes. So get in touch with them right now at www.clarkprotaxes.com. Their calendars are open right now and they're pre-booking for the new tax season. That's Clark protaxes.com and follow them on Facebook at Clark Pro Taxes. Listen, are you ashy as hell? Do you have dry, parched skin? Does your elbows look like elephant knees? If so, you want to get your skin from crusty to lovely, go to ashkicking.com to get all the lotions, lubricants, and body butters that you need to get your skin in order. They got all types of health and beauty products, everything you need. They got incense, things to make your house smell good, things to make you smell good. So again, go to ashkicking.com. Again, that's ashkicking.com. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think it, you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems, you have it. Maximum strip, hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon juice, and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready, that evil on lurk. Yeah. Let's get down to it. You are now tuned in to the godfather of the game. Often imitated and always celebrated. Stop sloganary. Sloganary kills people. Hey yo, check this out. It's Tyreek Nasheed on Tyreek Radio. Let's go. Let's go. Be my goddamn thumb alone. Oh, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're back. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Doing the late night broadcast. Doing the late night creep. I thank everybody for staying up with us so we can chop it up like we always do. Shout out to the folks out there on the East Coast. I know it's late out there, but y'all be up doing God knows what. I don't know what y'all be up so late for. Y'all be out there doing strange things in the middle of the night. I don't know what y'all be doing, but y'all be up late and still have to go to work early as hell in the morning. I don't know how you do it, but much respect to you. So we're here. And listen, listen, family. I got to thank everybody who has been taking advantage of the March Madness sale. We are almost sold out. We started the March Madness sale two days ago, Sunday night. We're almost sold out. We have a couple of March Madness packages left, ladies and gentlemen. We might be sold out by tomorrow. Get yours now. Get the March Madness sale right now. We had a phenomenal sale. For those who didn't know about the sale, this is the sale right here, the March Madness sale at officialfba.com. If you're watching now, go to the bottom of the page in the um, profile section, in the comment section or whatever the, the section below. 
And there's a link in the March Madness sale. You're going to get an Aratasasi cap. That is the tut word for arise. And remember, later on this year in December, we're going to celebrate the first full out foundational black American holiday. We're celebrating our own holiday December 24th of this year, starting. This is going to be an annual thing. We're going to celebrate our own holiday, Aretta Sussi. So we have a, a cap, the Aretta Sussi cap. Also, you're going to get the autographed copy of the Foundation of Black American book written by yours truly. You're also going to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, ladies and gentlemen. You're also going to get the Buck Breaking DVD. You're also going to get the FBA Family Backpack. You're also going to get a Foundational Black American Flag, ladies and gentlemen. And this deal, only $79 for all of these things. We are almost sold out. We have a couple of packages left. Get your package right now because the sale is going to end abruptly. I do not want y'all hitting me up on Friday like, hey, Tyree, I just got my check, brother. Can you have a sale for just one more day, brother? I just got my check today, brother. I was hoping you had it to Friday because my check was coming. I just got my check today. Can you have it? It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I wish I could help you, but it's a first come, first serve basis because if we're out of the packages, we're just out of the packages. If we're out of the packages, we're just out, ladies and gentlemen. And again, these things went very, very fast. Yes, indeed. Somebody said this is like a black adult Easter basket. Yes, it is. This is Easter for, for adults. But yes, get the package right now. Get it right now. Stop playing around. Don't hit me up Friday talking about can we keep it popping? Get it now because I'm pretty sure it will be sold out by Friday. But, I, but again, I thank everybody who took advantage of the package, man. It was just our way of showing appreciation when we have these discount deals. We'll throw them out there for a day or two just so people can um, take advantage of some of the great things that we have and um, to show appreciation. All right, so let's get into some of the things we're going to talk about on today's broadcast. The other day, we talked about Juicy. We talked about Juicy, among other things. But we got to get back into Juicy. Well, he's in jail. Well, he he Juicy just got out of jail, by the way. Juicy, and we're talking about Juicy Small Yay, Jesse Smollett. So Juicy Jussie, he's been blacking it up, just extremely black for the last couple of days. And he was making a lot of noise in jail. I mean, in, in the courtroom, I played the clip. I'm not going to play it again, but Juicy's been out here. Hey, oh, this is horrible. I'm innocent. I didn't do this. I mean, he's going to stick to the lie to the very end. All right. As we know, Juicy was um, convicted, tried and convicted of a hoax. He shouldn't have gotten any jail time because there's so many other people who commit these hoax. But the thing is, everybody's kind of letting Juicy hold his own nuts. Everybody's letting Juicy hold his own nuts. Pause, by the way. Pause. Nobody's really caping for Juicy. You know, we've spoken about the the peripheral injustice, meaning that white people and white supremacists, they get a away with doing hoaxes all the time, making false police reports all the time, and they don't get punished. So there is some hypocrisy to that. Even though there is hypocrisy to that, and if Juicy shouldn't have went to jail, the problem is this. Juicy thought that he could put his sexuality before his blackness. And when he learned that that doesn't work, he's just black. Now he wants to embrace the blackness, fake embrace it so that we can all come to his rescue. And we're just not doing that. And the reason why we're not doing it, because we understand how disingenuous he's being right now. 
we understand that Juicy is being very disingenuous. So Juicy was running around talking about, remember a couple of years ago when this thing first popped off, he was the gay Tupac. Oh, they made sure that you emphasize the homophobia attached to this thing, this hoax. That was the whole thing. To kind of piggyback off the racial aspect of the lie, but really Trojan horse the LGBT aspect of it so that the LGBT community, especially the white ones, could funnel in certain laws and policies and they can get money for their nonprofits. So Juicy was really taking one for the LGBT team. This wasn't for us. He was doing this hoax for LGBT clout. This was a clout chase gone wrong. He was trying to get clout within the LGBT community. He was trying, this was their Stonewall moment. And for those who don't know, Stonewall, we talk about that a lot. I talked about that in the last movie, Bug Breaking, how Stonewall, the Stonewall Inn, that was an incident that happened in New York in the 1960s where some black LGBT people got roughed up and then they got kicked out of this gay club and they got roughed up and touched up and there was a big fight and a big riot. Well, not a, even a big riot. There was kind of a skirmish. It wasn't that much of a riot, but there was somewhat of a skirmish because some black LGBT people were getting beat up because of their race. So the white LGBT community, they're remixing that history. They're trying to make it seem like a bunch of gay people got attacked because they were gay and that is not what happened with Stonewall. That is absolutely not what happened. See, they get history and then they try to remix it. So the white LGBT community, they need their own LGBT civil rights moment. They've been out here trying to create their own Edmund Pettus Bridge. You understand? They're trying to create their own Selma. So they're trying to create the Edmund Penis Bridge and the Edmund Penis Bridge ain't working. They're trying to create the Edmund Penis Bridge <laughs> and the Edmund Penis Bridge narrative backfired on them. They tried to create that narrative with Juicy. They tried to make this some type of landmark moment, historical moment of anti-LGBT violence where uh, a strong activist stood up to it. Oh, they were going to put this in the history books. But the, the problem is this. Remember, all of these people have to piggyback off the momentum that Foundation of Black Americans create. They have to piggyback off, or, off of our momentum in order for things to be legitimized. They got to get us on board in mass. They got to get us on board. And the problem is we didn't get on board with this Jesse nonsense. We didn't get on board with the Edmund Penis Bridge narrative. We just didn't. Black folks didn't get on board at all. We were like, yeah, I don't believe this. And the fact that we said early on that none of us believe this nonsense they use this and they jump. This is where they jump the gun too soon because what they like to do, they like to sit up here and get black folks to piggyback a lot of these narratives. And then once we piggyback the narrative, they flip on us and then start badgering and beating us and attacking us. And they started attacking us early on. They start talking about, well, these homophobic black people, don't want to acknowledge that this was also a homophobic attack. All of the homophobia in the black community, the straight black community, don't want to acknowledge all of what really happened. They were running with that narrative. Remember, I told people the other day, I'll show the, the thing again. Hold on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, I'll show the vibe cover again. All right. This, remember, this is vibe. I showed this the other day. This is um, from 2019. Straight black men silence on Jesse Smollett's homophobic and racist attack is dangerous. So they were already attacking us because that was that was what they wanted to do. See, they thought that they were going to bully us to go along with this thing. And they jumped the gun too soon. 
because again, we've put out this buck breaking narrative and we're getting a lot of folks on code. There's a lot of black folks on code and we're like, we're not being bullied. A lot of us are just not being bullied by the white LGBT community. We don't care about you sending your flunkies and your minions down to us to kind of badger us with these narratives. We're not going for it. We're not afraid. We've been calling them out. And the thing is, we saw this for what it was. We saw it was a hoax. We saw it was a clout chase by Jesse and the Democratic politicians. We saw it. We saw the game. We called it out early. We knew what was up. So because we didn't get on board, everything fell flat. And then when they started to do an investigation, the white LGBT community, they started backing off. They they throw rocks and they hide their hands. So they left Jussie out there and the other Negroes, they let them out there to rot, which is what they always do. So now that the white LGBT, they've abandoned these fools. They've abandoned Jussie. So now Jussie tried to turn into Juicy X. He got sentenced to prison and all of a sudden he's Bussy P. Newton. All of a sudden, he's Bussy Shabazz. Oh, he's blacker than black. He's running around the court, pumping his fist, doing the black power fist. And boy, he was in jail for like one or two days. And boy, they, they were complaining. His family's out there talking about, oh, no, he's he got to go in protective custody. His Bussy is in jeopardy. Oh, my God. They got to put him somewhere in a special bed. Oh, they were yelling and whining and they were trying to reprimand the black community. So now what they've done, they have an appeal now. His lawyers went and argued for an appeal and to free him while he's on appeal. So Jussie is out of jail now. Jussie is out of jail now. Jussie is free. Juicy is Lucy right now. He's loose. Juicy is Lucy. Juicy is back on the streets back on the block looking for cock. He's back on the streets right now. <laughs> Juicy is back on the streets. But check this out though. So Juicy's family is out here. And let me, pl- I posted this on my Instagram. Now this is Juicy's family, his brother. His brother, Joe something. I, I forgot, Joe Quinn. I forgot what his brother's name is. But this is Juicy's brother. I want y'all to listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. This is Juicy's brother. Listen to this. This is him doing an interview going in on black people. His brother's doing an interview talking about Jesse's not getting all the support from the black community because of all of the homophobia of, of the black community. Juicy's brother is talking about the black community is so homophobic. This is why we're not getting behind him. Listen to this, family. Hold on. Y'all got to hear this. Listen to this. Wait a minute. Our community is innately has a lot of homophobia in it. And and they leverage that fact. They they knew that ultimately Jesse was not going to get the same type of support as a straight black man. Mm. And it's been obvious. I find it very difficult to believe that this ever would have gotten this far if Jesse was a straight black man. And so we we need to really think about that. Celebrities, common people, everyone. We need to think about the fact that literally society at large failed him. Mm -hmm. And hopefully one day the truth comes out to where people can see it clear as day. I don't know how they don't see it now, but hopefully someday that happens. And when that day happens, it's really a shame that it took that long for folks to understand that. Jackie, so you think that if Jesse were a straight black man, the public reception would have been way less um, intent on vilifying him from the jump? Hands down. As a straight black man, that is hands down what would have happened. Our community is innately okay. high. Okay. okay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, did he say as a straight black? Okay. Is he saying he's straight? Because this man doesn't seem straight, by the way. All right. That man doesn't, Juicy's brother don't seem straight. And what's going on with that family? These, all the guys, all the boys in the family are moist. Yeah, so he said as a straight black man. I don't think he's straight. But listen, you did you hear the narrative? Did you hear this narrative? 
the narrative is the black folks didn't support Juicy <clears throat> because we're just so damn homophobic. And if this was a straight black man, we would have rallied around him? No, no, no. No, y'all not, no, 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 no. You're not going to sit here and attack black Americans. You're not going to attack us. Yeah, they all, they got that white dad. I always say these white dads raising these black boys, boy, these boys, isn't something's always funny style. But family, do y'all see these folks are using this to attack? They're just going to find a way to attack black people with this nonsense. We don't want nothing to do with this juicy nonsense. We don't want anything to do with it, family. And they keep trying to crowbar an attack of us. When it first started, they were trying to attack us, talking about we ain't acknowledging the homophobia because we're so homophobic as a black community. And now, because we ain't supporting the lies, this guy has been proven to be a damn liar. He got convicted for lying. So now we're homophobic because we ain't supporting his damn lies? No, 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 no. Y'all not going to bring that to us. You're not going to attack black society. No, no, no. Hold your own nuts because you thought your sexuality gave you some type of um, fast pass in front of the line, and it didn't. You're not going to play that game. You're not going to turn into Juicy X all of a sudden, and then the black community is supposed to galvanize around you because you black and you made a claim of racism. No, 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 no. You put your sexuality first because if you're going to complain about people not supporting you, how come you're not complaining about the white LGBT community not supporting Jussie? The white LGBT community completely abandoned Juicy. They were the main ones at first talking about how homophobic this was and they were badgering everybody. Hey, y'all better, you better acknowledge that this is homophobic. You better acknowledge, don't just talk about the race. It was the white LGBT community doing that. When the hoax was in full motion, the white LGBT community had all of their nonprofit links. They were making a grip off this stuff. They were right there lockstep. When things went bad, all of a sudden they, they ditched you. Why are you not complaining about the white LGBT community ditching you? They're the ones who left you out here. And ain't helping you at all. They left you hanging. You tried to clout chase and they let you know you's just a Negro. So now you're trying to flimsy galvanize some black support and we're just not going for it. No, we're not going for it. You're going to have to hold that L on your own. We don't have anything to do with this weak little finesse. Y'all tried to pull juicy and family and friends. Yeah. Is it unjust for you to get locked up? because other white people do it. Yeah, but that's the problem with systematic white supremacy. We know this. We already understand that we can't do the same thing as the white supremacists. We understand that. You, are the, on the other hand, Jesse, you thought your sexuality gave you some kind of privilege status as a black person. And the white supremacists had to remind you, no, it doesn't work like that. You're still a Negro. And once you get your Negro wake up call, you want every black person to jump up and and come and protect you. And look, no, it doesn't work like that. See, what y'all want to do, you don't want to pay your insurance premiums. And when you get in an accident, you want to pay out. You see? It doesn't work like that. You ain't been paying your premiums, buddy. A lot of folks have this thing when it comes to black folks. You don't want to pay your premiums and the minute you get into an accident, oh man, I need a payout, man. I need to cash out. No, it don't work like that. It doesn't work like that, ladies and gentlemen. This is why black folks who are down with black folks all the time, when something like this goes down, then they'll get that support. When we see black folks who've been riding for the community, and we see something unjust happens to them, that's when we'll gavel, galvanize because they've been paying their premium, so to speak. They've been looking out for the black community first. They prioritize the black community first. When you prioritize the community, the community will prioritize you and the, the community will look out for you. 
See, y'all got to get off this thing where you don't want to prioritize the black community. See, y'all get this thing where you something else. I ain't like the rest of these Negroes. And then when you get reminded, oh, yes, you are, you want us to come in and swing through with the capes, and that's just not going to happen. You understand? You got to pay your premiums. But Juicy, this is on you, brother. Juicy X, don't try to be Juicy X now. Don't convert to a, to being a Hebrew Israelite or whatever you're trying to be now. No, that's not going to work, bro. Yeah, people like Muhammad Ali, yeah, that's a great example. People like Muhammad Ali, he looked out for the community at all times. That's why he was a hero all of his life. When things went down with Muhammad Ali, the black community looked out for Muhammad Ali. The black community rode for Muhammad Ali. When they were trying to lock our brother up, the black community was riding for him. And he's been a national hero ever since he got in the game. Until he died, we looked at him as a hero. Marion Barry, that's another one. Marion Barry, he rode out for the black community. Marion Barry looked out for the black people of D.C. So when they called him up in that hotel room with that pipe, we didn't even trip. We still said, oh, we're going to look out for that brother. Yeah, he smoked a little crack, but he's still looking out. So, yeah, we're going to make sure he's good. We'll get him in a little rehab. We'll check his crack holes for him or whatever. But that's our brother. Marion Barry is the dude. That's our brother. So we looked out for him. You understand? But Juicy, you can't come around here talking about the racial element and all and no, it doesn't work like that you can't talk about the racial element because you're the gay Tupac remember so this clout chase backfired and this is a very good lesson to learn you gotta ride for black folks all the time you have to prioritize black folks all the time and now Listen, Juicy, you see his family is out here attacking black folks. I expect Juicy to start attacking black folks now. Now that he see we ain't really riding for him, I think he's going to double down trying to get back into the good graces of the white LGBT community. I think you're going to see a lot of Juicy. He's going to take off the koofy and start taking shots at black society. I think he's about to go all in on us now which we ain't tripping, we're not even, we wouldn't even be surprised. It is what it is. But family, we got, we have real injustices out here. We're not going to galvanize behind something that is clearly a hoax, something that has been proven to be a hoax. We're not going to galvanize behind that. We're not going to waste our energy behind that because we're trying to have legitimate activism out here. We got le very legitimate issues. We got real things happening out here. So we don't want to delegitimize our movements by galvanizing around something that's clearly a hoax. And it's just a bad look. Juicy, just take your L, man. Why don't you just take your damn L? Nobody's galvanizing around this nonsense. Man, you took an L. Take your L. Man, I messed up. You're going to sit here lying to the damn end. Dude, you got convicted. Nobody believed it. You didn't get robbed. Nobody did anything to you. You're out there with those two African dudes doing something strange for a little piece of change. Man, just take your L, man. Go on and take your damn L. And stop trying to drag us into this nonsense. We ain't with it, man. And speaking of injustice, man, have y'all seen what's going on out here in Tennessee? Where are my Tennessee people? All of my people in Tennessee, raise your hand. All my people in Tennessee. Now, this is a story, family. We got to be on top of this right now. This is a very important story coming out of Tennessee, family. We got to really, really, really be on top of this case that's happening out here in Tennessee right now. Now, there's a small town in Tennessee. I'm talking about a very small town. It's like, I want to say about 1,200 people live in this town called Mason, Tennessee. Mason, Tennessee is a very small town. It's majority black, predominantly black. I think it's like 60% black. Very small town. 
and it's an incorporated town. It's been incorporated for 153 years. Okay? A few years ago, some white politicians that were really running the show over there, they had to resign because of all the damn corruption over there. There was a lot of corruption with the white politicians 2016. So they had to get ousted. They had to resign because they were mismanaging money. Some people say they were finessing and stealing money and just um, skimming off the, the city funds and the whole nine yards. So the white politicians had to bounce. So now there are black politicians kind of running things over there now. And they're getting it together. They're running things smoothly to a certain degree. They've been running it for the last five, six years. Now what's happening out there, the, a Ford factory is about to be built out there. A Ford factory is about to be built around, about four miles away from this black town, this predominantly black town. And this Ford factory is gonna be one of the biggest investments that the state of Tennessee has ever seen. This is a huge investment for Tennessee, the whole state. And it's gonna be four miles from Mason, Tennessee, okay? So this means that there's about to be a big economic boom. This little town that people pretty much forgot about. They just brush them to the side and they just let these people sit there for a hundred and something years and they ain't even thinking about them. Now this town is about to get a huge economic boom. They're talking about this Ford factory coming in and they're going to be bringing in, in electric cars. Yeah, they're bringing in electric vehicles. So they're talking about billions of dollars being brought to this area and the state of Tennessee right by this black town family. They're talking about, they're about to have about 27,000 new jobs. Family, I'm talking about a major boom. And now this little town with these black folks running things, the real estate is about to go up through the roof. There's about to be a lot of jobs. The economic prosperity is about to pop off. So all of a sudden, out the blue, the white politicians had to pop up and say, hey, wait a minute, hold on now. So now the white politicians, the, the comptroller of the state, they had to jump in and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, we can't let this all happen. So now state officials, here's a story about it. State officials asked the residents of a small, predominantly black town near the site of the new Ford investment to forfeit their city charter or face a takeover. So now they're telling the people y'all need to dissolve the city charter right now. Yeah, I know you're your own town, but you need to either dissolve the city charter and then blend in with the other white town that we run. We run the white town around here. So you have to blend in with us where we control everything or we, the state of Tennessee, we're just going to take over all your finances. So the black people are like, hey, what the hell? What in the hell is this? Now, family, this is how they sabotage black folks. This is an old tactic. This is an old tactic. This is what they always do. Here's the Tennessee comptroller issued an unusual appeal last week to the residents of this small majority black town. In my opinion, it's time for Mason to relinquish its charter. Comptroller Jason Mumpower wrote in a letter mailed to each one of the property owners. He urged local residents to encourage a local official to do what's necessary to allow Mason to thrive. There is no time to waste. This is the suspected white supremacist right here. So right here, they're talking about Macon, Mason rather, lies just five miles from the future site of Blue Oval City, the Ford Motor Company, 4,100 acre electric truck and battery plant with nearly $1 billion in taxpayer incentives. The operation is expected to generate 27,000 new jobs and $22 million annually in state taxes after the plan opening in 2025. So now the black area is about to pop off. So all of a sudden, 
They're coming in here talking about they got to dissolve the charter. Family, this is Jim Crow. This is real white supremacy right here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is real white supremacy. They have you thinking that white supremacy is the skinheads or the Aryan nation. No. The white supremacists is this guy right here. This is white supremacy. This is how they do it. This is how they undermine black folks. And this guy is on Twitter. Jason Mumpower, he's on Twitter. Let me play a clip of him because there was a, a reporter, an independent reporter out there in Tennessee who confronted him and listen to the white splaining. Listen to all the I'm white and I say so talk that he gets into. Hold on one second. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, where is it? Uh, where is it? Where is that? This it. There it is. Okay, this is him. Now listen to him explain it. Somebody confronted him about this and listen to all the I'm white and I say so gibberish that he gets into. Hold on one second. How does that get justified and what is the situation with the finances specifically? 20 years of poor financial management in Mason. What we're trying to do is help them get on track so that they can benefit from all the development that's coming to their area. And why is this becoming a situation now? When well, it, it's you know, been, a, so been a situation for 20 years. Right, but like, uh, why are you leaning on them now? Well, it's just Fort become Trump? it's just become untenable. And they've never had an opportunity to... Tax-paying citizens have never had an opportunity like they do now. It's for their own good? It's for the good of the tax-paying citizens who are getting nothing for the taxes they're paying. What does that mean, getting nothing? They're getting no services. So when the mayor of a city can't articulate what benefit the taxpayers are receiving from being a city, then it's time to evaluate whether they need to continue to be a city. From the timing of it that you're now starting to pressure them right when Ford shows up, it just it starts to look a little more than coincidental. So I'm wondering why suddenly are you taking an interest in Mason? Because if Mason doesn't get their finances in order, the opportunity for development is going to buy them. The opportunity for development. So the opportunity for situation. the opportunity for neighborhoods to develop. You know, Mason doesn't have a grocery store or a gas station, and the citizens suffer from from not having the ability to to have those things in their community. So if they don't get their finances in order, just as we have done with other communities across the state, the comptroller will have to run their finances for a while. What other communities does that happen to? Jellico, Van Buren County, to name a couple. We make a decision about their expenditures. They're feeling bullied, just so you know. I talked to them. So I understand. Okay. I understand. There's a lot of tough decisions that need to be made, but when you can't articulate a single benefit, that taxpayers are receiving for the highest municipal taxes paid in Tipton County, you've got to look inward. Okay, so this is a bunch of I'm white and I say so gibberish. That's all that was. That was a bunch of I'm white and I say so gibberish, family. And this is what happens when it comes to us dealing with these suspected white supremacists. Hold on, let me um, show a picture. I'm just going to post this picture up right here. That's him. That's him right there. Just let let that face sink in. Okay. All that was was a bunch of I'm white and I say so gibberish that he was doing. And family, they do they've been doing this nonsense for the last 200 years, ever since black people were freed. Whenever black folks started running cities and running them smoothly and economic booms were about to happen, they come in and undermine us every single time. Family, we cannot ever take our eye off the white supremacists. He's up here talking about they can't articulate the benefits or whatever. This is just some white and I say so talk. And see how they, the, they are perfectly fine when black folks are just sitting off in some little small town, ain't nothing popping, ain't no grocery store. They're fine when we're sitting over there and ain't nothing popping. They have nothing to say. The minute we start getting into a position where we're going to be elevated, all of a sudden, 
these people are just strategically placed in positions to undermine it. They're already there in those positions. They already have their positions in place to undermine us. The first, no, he's not a Democrat. He's a Republican. And that's another thing. See, and we can get into the Democrat and Republican thing. But look, even if he was a Democrat, you know what the Democrats would do? The Democrats would do the same thing. But the Democrats would do it more covertly. See, this is why I like full out white supremacy like this, because it's undeniable. And see, this is the kind of white supremacist that undermines them openly because this is just open right here. See, this is why I prefer this kind of white supremacy because you can't really deny this. See, the GOP, the, the Republicans, the right wingers, like they like to do their white supremacy on their own. They like to be old school with it, which is dangerous because it's not refined and it's so damn blatant. It undermines them, which is good. I like this kind of white supremacy because this puts everybody on alert. See, the Democrats, you know what they would do? The Democrats would do the same thing, but what they would do, they found out that there's about to be a big economic boom, so what they'll do, they'll insert a black mayor who was LGBT. They would insert a, another Lori Lightfoot. They would put a black mayor who was LGBT in there, and then they would start having all types of LGBT opportunity zones all around the little town. They would do that. They would designate designate a tra transville they, they would have a little trans part of town then another lgb part of town they designate all of these little lgb parts of town so the white lgbt people can come in and benefit off of it and then they'll funnel in the rest of the white people they'll do it like that they'll let the white l they'll the black lgbt first then they'll bring in the white lgbt and that will justify them getting parts of the black land, the land that black folks own. And then the straight white people would come in right after the white LGBT. And then the illegal immigrants, yeah, yeah. Then they'll let the illegal immigrants come in there. They'll flood, it'll be a damn safe zone for Ukrainian refugees, then Afghanistan refugees, then Somalian refugees, then Hispanic refugee. They'll have every refugee on the planet coming in there. That'll be a safe zone for them. So don't get it twisted. The Democrats would do the same thing, but they would just do it more refined. This is why I prefer this type of white supremacy because it's so blatant and open and they can't justify it. They look stupid when they try to explain. You understand? And they've been doing stuff like this family. They did it with Wilmington when black folks were up in Wilmington, North Carolina in the 1800s. They were running that city. Black people were in political positions. It was economically strong. The white people just came in and said, OK, we got to take this over. It was a hostile takeover. Same thing with Tulsa. We got to understand with Tulsa. Tulsa was an area of Oklahoma that white people weren't even thinking about. They said, OK, let's put the black folks over there. We ain't even thinking about them. They the black folks are over there quietly bouncing their money around and black people started becoming millionaires and black folks got so thorough other communities wanted to do business with black people in Tulsa. People in international communities wanted to do business with Tulsa and that was the problem. That was the problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they had to undermine the black people of Tulsa. We got to understand the game out here, ladies and gentlemen. The game is real. Up there in um, Ohio, right outside Cincinnati, they had something called Lincoln Heights. They did the same thing. There was a black town up there. Black folks was running things. They had a factory up there that was about to just really bring a lot of economic prosperity to um, Lincoln, Lincoln Heights up there in Cincinnati, that area. Then what they do, the white supremacists came in and said, hey, you know what we're going to do? It's time to rezone everything. We got to redistrict everything. We got to rezone the whole area now. We got to rezone everything. And we see a lot of this, man. Every time we, we get some real estate or we get into an area that's about to have an economic boom, all of a sudden, the foolery happens. Same thing that happened. We're going through this in L.A. right now. We're going through this in L.A. right now. That's what happened to our brother Nipsey. 
as we all know, that area down there, Dempsey was smart enough to to get dibs on it and invest in that area early on because they were building that stadium down there, that big stadium out there in Inglewood, down there in South LA, and they knew that that was going to bring a lot of economic boom in that area, which it's doing right now. And Crenshaw, there's going to be a big economic boom out there on Crenshaw Boulevard right now. We're coming soon. There's about to be a huge boom. And family, they are giving us the runaround. I'm telling you firsthand knowledge. They are giving us the runaround like crazy. They are giving us the runaround. We're still fighting, though. We're still fighting. We're trying to have the marathon continue, but they are still giving us the runaround out there on Crenshaw because they know what it is out there. They know that thing is about to pop off in a couple of years. That's why we are a lot of us are trying to get dibs on the real estate out there. We are fighting tooth and nail, man. If you guys really understood. But um, there's a place out there that I've been hearing about in in Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. I've been hearing good things about Pine Bluff. They they got a lot of good black businesses out there. I want to go out there and visit Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff, Arkansas is doing some good things. A lot of black folks are kind of running that town. A lot of good businesses out there. I'm hearing a lot of good stuff out there. Um, There's a lot of little black towns that's actually doing good. And when it gets to the point where they're going to have a real big boom, that's when we start seeing the sabotage. When some real big money is about to come in, that's when we see the sabotage. But there's so many black folks who are on code right now who's really just doing things among each other, which is dangerous to the white supremacists, see? They don't like us being on code. This is why they like to flood us with all of these non-FBA immigrant groups who are not on code with us and they like to set them down on top of us. But a lot of foundational black Americans, we are very much on code among ourselves in a lot of places. And little towns like Pine Bluff and other places, shout out in Atlanta, as a matter of fact, they got the, the little black Wall Street area, the mall area out there that they're doing good things. You see, when we get on code, and do good things among ourselves and then there's an economic opportunity that pops off where billions of dollars are going to come through see then the 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 real white supremacist got to come through and say hey hey hey, wait a minute now oh time out hey let's um let's dissolve those charters you got over here yeah this little area here we're going to redistrict this yeah 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 we're going to rezone it and turn it into something else so we can run everything because uh this money that's going on over here Oh, you see. So my family out there in Tennessee, we got to really stay on top of this thing. We got to really stay on top of it, Tennessee. We need y'all out there in that area making calls. My Tennessee family, we need to be making noise about this. This type of stuff, we got to be on top of it. We have to stop this nonsense. We got to stop these Jim Crow ass tactics that these people are trying to use. Enough is enough. They sit up here lecturing us about pulling ourselves up by our damn bootstraps. And when there's an opportunity for us to do that, they're the first ones coming in to sabotage us. This happens too damn much. This is why we're in the situation we're in. Black people, we're the only, 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 only group who repeatedly get sabotaged like this. Every single time we're about to get any type of economic prosperity in our areas, they always come in with a sabotage. They're going to either build a freeway, build a railroad, rezone, redistrict, put a subway just like they did with Crenshaw. They put a, the, the train station right over there in Crenshaw. And we're trying to clean that up now and they're giving us a hard time. They put it there so that it could depress the the businesses there. And this is why we're fighting so much to try to get real estate out there right now. And they're giving us the runaround. But just all over, or or even if you you find a way to get the real estate, all of a sudden a gunman shows up and shoots you in broad daylight. And then they don't give him a trial for three, four years. Do y'all know the guy who shot our brother Nipsey? That dude, his trial hasn't even started yet. 
This dude's trial has still not started. They've been postponing this guy's trial for the last, what, three years? When did Nipsey get killed? Was it 2018 or 19? They've been kicking this man's trial around for the last three, four, or two or three years. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. But the thing is, family, when we on code, we are a powerhouse. They do not want us to be on code. We are a powerhouse. And this is one of the reasons why they have to keep us being dumped on by all of these outside groups because they understand outside groups who come among us, they're not going to be on the same code as us. The white supremacists are very aware of that. Yeah, so three years, our brother, yeah, three years. It would be three years this month, as a matter of fact. Our brother Nipsey got killed. It'd be three years this month. RIP to our brother. But we're so on code right now, family. We're hella on code. And speaking of on code, out here in California, they had, um, you know, the reparations task force and all of this stuff and these hearings, they just designated that we can be addressed as Foundation of Black Americans by our own lineage. They have a bill, what's the bill called? AB 1604, the Upward Mobility Act, Boards and Commission Civil Service Examinations and Classifications. So this is a new ruling out here, which is a great thing. It's AB 1604. Now, we've been making a lot of noise about us being designated as our own group because everybody likes to throw us in as one big Negro. And right here, this is a very important part of the bill right here. This is the important part right here. This bill would require any state agency board or commission that directly or by contract collects demographic data as to the ancestry or ethnic, ethnic origin of Californians to use separate collection categories and tabulations for specific African-American groups. This bill would distinguish between African-Americans who are descendants of persons enslaved in the United States and African-Americans who are not descendants of persons enslaved in the United States as defined. Now, this is good. This is very, very good. So now, whenever we're talking about getting certain things or benefits for black people, they're not going to lump us in as one big Negro. We can say, okay, certain things is for foundational black Americans. See, this is why it's important that we designate our lineage. And we've been drilling that thing, and now we got it in a bill, all right? Which is good. We're not taking a victory lap yet. I don't like to take victory laps until we get a lot of stuff done. This is the first step. No time for celebration, but this is the first step, and this is a good thing. This is why a lot of the tethers have been kind of shaking in their boots. The tether class. Now, I'm not talking about the riders who are non-FBA. We got some riders out there who are non-FBA. We got a lot of riders who are non-FBA, but then we got the tether class. And this is the reason why the tether class has been nervous, because they see we're making moves here now. They sat here, oh, you niggas, we, you niggas, you can't do anything, you FBA lineage nigga. No, nigga. What are you going to do? This is what we're doing right here. We're getting bills locked down, designating that we are a specific group. Oh, oh, nigga, this nigga is doing it. Uh, See, this is why the tethers are nervous now, because, see, so many people have been sitting up just eating off of us. And this is the thing. A lot of these tether groups, and again, I, I, I... differentiate the tethers from the riders who are non-FBA because we got non-FBA riders out here. We do. We got some good riders out here. But the tethers who don't want to ride, who want to come among us and undermine us, they've been shaking in their boots because they know they ain't about to do anything to challenge white supremacy. They ain't about to do anything. They want to sit back, let us do all the work so they can just float. Now that we're designating our own group, you're going to have to start putting in your own work for your group. That means you're going to have to get off that ass and start doing the work to get what you need for your group. You cannot sit up here and just ride on us all damn day. 
you're going to have to get up and make that thing happen since you got all your degrees, since you whack so hard and all of that stuff you like bragging about, make that thing happen. That's why they got such a problem with us designating our lineage because people depend on us to do all the fighting for them. And we're saying no more. Everybody's going to have to hold their own weight here. You see? Because, see, people like to point the finger. Some of the tethers like to sit up here and act like Foundation of Black Americans. We're the only ones who are getting targeted by the white supremacists. They like to play that game. But when some of them are getting targeted, they like to keep their mouths shut and then they get nervous. Because we ain't fighting and we ain't going out there falling on the sword for them. For example, this case right here out there in Pennsylvania. No charges in the shooting death of a Jamaican immigrant. This Jamaican immigrant out here hanging with these white folks. They said, hey, man, let's go hunting. And his ass went hunting with them. And then they killed him. And none of them are going to get charged. And some of the stuff that they said, they said that he was acting erratic. They said he went on the hunting trip and he was acting like he was on drugs and he looked like he was going to get a gun and shoot at them. They made up all types of stuff. A bunch of I'm white now. I say so stuff to justify killing this man. And I don't see none of the J Jamaicans or Caribbeans and none of the immigrants really putting in no work about this. They're not making no noise about this. They ain't saying nothing about this. They're very quiet about this. Come on. A lot of them are extremely quiet about this. No, y'all better start speaking up because we ain't going to jump on the sword for every little situation that happens. And also, speaking of that, out here in New York, that dude, it was another one of these attacks where one of these non-FBA dudes they catch them right on camera beating up some Asian person. Many people believe these are staged. I, I do believe a lot of this stuff is staged. But let's be very clear. These people, his name is Tamel Esco. So that's a non-FBA name right there. That's one of them Caribbean names. Again, we've been saying, hey, don't bring this stuff over here to us. These people doing these crimes are non-FBA. Don't sit there talking about how come black folks ain't doing this and black folk? No, no, no. We ain't got nothing to do with this. These people are non-FBA. They ain't got nothing to do with us. If they're being paid to do it, that ain't got nothing to do with us. If they're real doing this, it ain't got nothing to do with us. Either way, it ain't got nothing to do with us. I am not playing that game with these folks. That has nothing to do with us at all. And then people want to get mad when we distance ourselves from these non-FBA criminals doing this crazy stuff or getting paid to do this stuff. Oh, why are you why are you distancing yourself? We're all black. No, 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 no. We are not all black because when you do something constructive, you ain't black no more. You make sure all of your positive attributes are attributed to your nationality. You make sure all of your positive attributes are attributed to to the Caribbean or some African nation. But when it's some fool like this, you want to dump him on us. We do not want nobody else's trash. No, thank you. The days of y'all dumping your trash on us is over. I'm tired of people dumping their cultural trash on us. If you're going to take your doctors and your lawyers, take your sambos and criminals with you. Take them right over there with you. Do not dump them on us. He is not FBA. We are Bennett. We ain't in it. He ain't got nothing to do with us. That's the new energy that we're going to stay on, ladies and gentlemen. Because, look, we are our own nationality. Foundation of Black Americans family, we are a nation. We got to be very clear. Not only we're an ethnic group, we're our own nation. We are our own nation. That's what a nation is. A nation is just a bunch of people who are on code with each other. A bunch of people from a geographic location who are on code with each other. That's all a nation is. And now that we have acknowledged our nation, we acknowledge the greatness of our nation as Foundation of Black Americans and all of the contributions that Foundation of Black Americans have contributed, part of our culture. Now people are trying to cop please. 
for a long time we set a foundation of black americans what we did we did this thing where we gave away our culture we would give away our culture we would just attribute everything we did to africa we contribute everything we did to wakanda or whatever we just gave everything away even hip-hop we just let everybody leech off of it and the problem is we let people leech off of our culture and then they get so arrogant they'll turn around and say hey guys we gave you this you need to thank us you need to thank us jamaicans for giving you hip-hop it gets disrespectful at at a certain point this is why we had to say hey enough is enough we're gonna start owning our culture and all of it i mean all of it because we gave away so much of our culture to the point where people got around us talking about we don't have a culture. Well, you foundational black American niggas, you have no culture. Okay, nigga, what's yours? Uh. Then they start scratching their heads. See, they ran a game on us. We're the only people that have a real thorough, significant culture. Foundational black Americans. We're the only people that have globally recognized cultures that celebrated and enjoyed by the world. We're the only group that has that. I'm talking about all across the board. Foundational black American culture is revered and celebrated globally. We are the culture, man. We've created damn near everything over here. Everything that is American culture is seeped in foundational black American culture. We got to keep it a buck. And I wanted us to start looking at our foundation of black American heritage because we got this thing where we're told we got to look 5,000 years ago to Africa and we don't have to do that. We're overlooking all of these wonderful foundational black American writers who paved the way right here on our land, right under our noses, right within our families. See, I, I travel the world and I travel the country. And this this is the thing that made me want to really focus on our foundation of black American culture, because being a full blooded foundation of black American and I've traveled all over this country, interacting and getting with foundation of black Americans. I know how wonderful and great we are. Just traveling around, being among our people, man, and I've been everywhere in this country, all over the country, and I've seen foundational black Americans, the spirit. You people are wonderful. I wish we travel more to get with other foundational black Americans around the country. We are damn phenomenal. When I go down to Texas, I see phenomenal foundational black Americans doing wonderful things. See what we do, we, we let the white media tell us about all the crime that happens in these cities. But when you go and just interact with the people and just learn, because I learn about a lot of stuff by going to these different cities and talking to people. That's the thing. You learn so much by going places, just talking to the damn people. That's why I know so much stuff. People are like, damn, you know a lot of stuff. Yeah, because I go around the country and just talk to people. I learn a lot of stuff from y'all here. We just have to get around each other and talk. When I go down to New Orleans, man, I learned so much stuff just talking to the locals. When they were telling me about the Fleur de Lis, the, the, the New Orleans Saints, the, the logo and the history of that, I learned that from talking to the people. Again, when I went to Cincinnati, I did a lecture there. They were breaking the stuff down about the Lincoln Heights area and how they rezoned the area. It was a prosperous black area. When I went to Buffalo, the people there told me that the city was settled by a black man. Black Joe was a black man who settled that city, who created Buffalo. When I went out there to the East Coast, D.C., out there, D.C., Virginia, my good brother Randy Short taught me about the dismal swamp out there. You go to these places and just chop up game with the locals and they'll break it down. Those are some of the best teachers. You just go down and chop up game with the folks and they'll let you know what's going on. 
you'll learn so much about our culture. When I went out there to Savannah, I fell in love with the people of Savannah. I learned that some of the best cooks were out there in Savannah and South Carolina. And dude, the food was amazing out there. A lot of folks, I learned that gumbo came from out there. They were doing gumbo before it went to Louisiana, out there in South Carolina and Savannah. Some of the best cooks are out there in Savannah and South Carolina. That's where they had some of the most thorough cooks. That's where the the white women be out there stealing them damn recipes. The Paula Deans and all these people, that's where they be stealing them recipes from. We don't understand. We are the culture, man. You get around, you some good foundation of black Americans. Man, our culture is so deep in all of these places. It was a brother hit me up the other day telling me about his, one of his relatives was an outlaw. It was a black man out there in Alabama named um, Wyatt Tate. The brother hit me up on Twitter. Yeah, man, one of my relatives was a rider. He was out there shooting them white folks. This brother was going in on white supremacists. It was an outlaw in the late 1800s out there in Alabama, out there busting on white folks. They were tracking this brother down. There was a lot of them out there. There was a lot of these brothers out here who wasn't going to let themselves be lynched. And they said, hey, I'm about to go out here and just take a whole bunch of folks with me. There's a brother in uh, Mississippi, Joe Pullen. Joe Pullen, that's his name. Joe Pullen, he took out a bunch of white supremacists who tried to lynch him. There's so much history in some of these towns out there in Alabama where I live. There's a a lake called Hal Lake that's named after a black maroon. We're going to talk about this in our maroon documentary. There's a brother who freed himself and he started a maroon colony called Hal's Kingdom by a lake out there in Alabama. And the lake is still there and it's called Hal's Lake. It's still called Hal's Lake. Foundational black American maroon got himself off a plantation and, and started a maroon colony out there. Man, we are the culture. Man, we I'm not going to overlook those type of people, man. We are damn phenomenal. Ain't nobody else like us, man. Shout out to the Bay Area. A lot of Bay Area folks in here. Shout out to the Bay. Speaking of culture, I got to give a shout out to the Bay Area. Do y'all know so many dances that then came out of the Bay? The Bay Area does not get enough credit for the dances that come out of the Bay Area. That northern and central California area, the Oakland and Fresno and all of that stuff. So many dances that's pivotal to the hip hop movement came out of the Bay Area. In the 1960s, them brothers were were doing the boogaloo dances and that turned into like the robot and the ticking and popping. All of that stuff came out of the Bay. The Bay Area has a lot of good dancers up there. That's why Hammer danced so good. Hammer wasn't the only one. Real talk, the Bay Area is very, very slept on when it comes to dances and creations of dances out there. Very, very slept on out there. You understand? A lot of stuff came out of there. We got to give our people their props. We got to give our people their shine. You understand? But yeah, a lot of people now that we are looking at our heritage and we're looking at the the value in our heritage. Now people want to get on the damn bandwagon. Now people are trying to cop please now that we ain't trying to float everybody on our backs. You got people like this trying to cop please. What's this verse? Y'all do know the Caribbean islands. That's still a part of America, right? Meaning people from Central America, they all still Americans too. So these people are trying to crowbar themselves into the foundation. They're trying to be $5 FBAs now. You see a lot of that. You got a lot of people trying to cop please and be $5 FBAs. Now let them know, brother, not Atlanta. You're not Atlanta. You're not FBA. Central America, not Atlanta. Jamaica, not Atlanta. Trinidad, you're not Atlanta. <laughs> Honduras, you're not Atlanta. You're not FBA, bro. Now, much respect to your culture. Knock yourself out. You got a good culture. Enjoy your culture, but you're not Atlanta. As our sister uh, Amaretta said, you're not Atlanta. You're not FBA, bro. We ain't doing that. All the $5 FBAs, you, you, nah. Y'all ain't about to try to crowbar some type of 
logistical justification. Well, well, uh, uh, the Bahamas, that is kind of like it's right by America. So being a Bahamian, I could be FBA too. No, you're not Atlanta. Not Atlanta. No, not Atlanta. <laughs> Sorry, brother. No, enjoy yourself. You got your culture, but you're not Atlanta, bro. Shout out to you, but you're not Atlanta. Uh, we, we cleaning this thing up. We cleaning it up. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here. Don't forget, man, we got the um, March Madness sale going on right now still. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the March Madness sale going on. Um, we're almost sold out, ladies and gentlemen, with the March Madness sale. So... You need to go take advantage right now. Go to officialfba.com, officialfba.com, officialfba.com. We got a few packages left. It's going to sell out probably by tomorrow. So get your package now. We're almost out of them. Get your package now, ladies and gentlemen. Get your package now. Um, Very good deal in this package. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm up out of here. I will holla at you guys later on this week. Follow me on Twitter so you can join my Twitter spaces. I'll do some Twitter spaces later on this week. And I'm going to do my show Saturday because I'm going to the new edition Charlie Wilson concert um, this Sunday. You know when Charlie Wilson coming to town with the new edition in Jodeci, you know I'm there. I'm all the way there. So I'm doing my Sunday show this Saturday. So y'all tune in. Subscribe to this channel, by the way, if you have not subscribed. Subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to holler. Y'all be 